You're listening to the Business Mike Podcast. Amazing interviews with entrepreneurs and industry thought leaders. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Mike Podcast. And joining me today is uh, Georges. Uh, Georges, can you introduce yourself to our audience and let us know a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, uh, hello, Daudi. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. My name is George Isama. Um, I'm from Cameroon, Central Africa. Uh, actually, I'm the sales professional for around uh, 12 years now. Um, I'm a newly appointed um, head of customer relations, uh, and marketing and communication in a telecommunication company and uh, a public company as well. So um, actually, uh, next to that, um, I'm a CXPA member. So I've joined CXPA uh, since uh, last, the last five years now. And I've been involved in various projects with CXPA. And um, actually, I'm a member of CXPA Africa Council and also the chair of CXPA Africa for 2023. And also, I had the opportunity you know, to win um, some uh, international awards um, um, CS Leader of the Year, uh, our Culture Awards, um, um, Emerging Leader of the Year. So, um, uh, um, this is this is what I can say. I, I'm a passionate, <laughs> I'm a passionate uh, CS professionals, and um, I like to you know support people, help people. And this is what uh, this is how I can present myself. Right. Now, I've had uh, v- uh, various uh, customer experience professionals in the group, and one common theme that comes up is the appreciation for customer experience, more so in the recent years, especially after COVID. So for someone like yourself who's been uh, in the industry for a long time, um, just for the benefit of those that might want to join this profession, um, how did you end up uh, becoming a customer experience enthusiast and professional at that yeah, I have a very uncommon, uncommon path. Um, when I finished school, uh, uh, obviously I had a bachelor degree in accounting and finance, so I was not very much destined to be uh, to be in the customer experience uh, discipline or industry. But when I started my first position as um, a customer care agent, um, my day-to-day job was really much more to you know to serve customers, provide services, provide support. And I think uh, this is where my passion and my envy, you know, to to continue in that path came. Because, um, you know, it's very interesting when you are like a solution provider, um, when uh, people come to you when they want a solution. And I I, I felt that I need to, to, to do more about it. So I really engaged in that part, and um, finally, I, I evolved all over all over the years in the company until being appointed head of customer relations and now um, senior manager marketing and communications. So um, I think that if someone is really passionate, you know, about caring and serving for people, it is a, a good sign that um, he can he can engage, you know, in that in that part in that domain. Um, if someone started his position as a customer care agent or a customer service or you know customer experience agent, um, it is always an advantage. But I I think that this is this is one of the best um, discipline um, you can 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 access. Right. Now, earlier on, you mentioned uh, being a member of uh, CXPA. Uh, For the benefit of those that don't understand what exactly that is and and what it does, uh, what is CXPA? Yeah, CXPA is the Customer Experience Professional Association. Um, It's a global organization, um, a global community of CS professionals uh, from all over the world. Uh, the mission of CXP is really to, to support CS professionals so they can grow, learn, and inspire their organization and their environment. So CSP is around two, three thousand uh, members from, from all over the world, from around seventy countries um, like that. And um, it's really a global community. You encounter people from um, various places of the world having the same challenges you know, transforming organizations, transforming the cultures 
um, CXPA is really a place of exchange and um, it's also a place of knowledge because um, you have opportunities to access a massive amount of knowledge and publications. Um, like for example, um, CXPA published the first ever CS book of knowledge um, last year. So it's really a global community and it is, it's really amazing, you know, to join that community and, you know, encounter people and talk with people who have the same challenges that you have and um, have, you know, achieved uh, results and can also inspire you in what you do. Right. And as the president of CXPA Africa, um, the assumption here is that you have access to uh, interactions with uh, professionals in the continent. What, what observations have you made as far as uh, customer experience is concerned uh, in Africa in particular? Yeah, um, as a chair of CSPA Africa, um, uh, our team, uh, you know, performed last year, you know, like the like baseline analysis um, to, to, you know, try to understand the state of customer experience in the region. And here are some of the findings <laughs> that, that we, we, we found. Um, first of all, the first observation that we had is that um, some countries in Africa are more advanced in maturity, um, you know, talking about putting customers at the center of their the business in the organizations in these countries than other countries, right? So um, you will see that in some countries you have a community of CS professionals, you have, you know, like um, global organizations, uh, organizations really uh, gathering together to talk about customers' issues, but we don't always encounter that uh, in some other countries. I think the first challenge here is really, you know, how to level up everyone in the region, everyone in Africa, every country, so that, um, you know, have a global community which is mature uh, itself. The second observation that we made is that in a sample of around 100 organizations from all over Africa, um, just 12 to 15 percent have established um, putting the customer or the employee at the center of their business in part of their vision, mission, or values, right? So vision, mission, and values are like, you know, the baseline of how our organization works. And just like 12 to 15 percent of these, these big organizations have said, we put the customer at the center or the employee at the center of our business as our vision, mission, and values. So the challenge here is, is how can we, you know, align all the organizations, the big major organizations in Africa, you know, generating that economic value to, to always, to also, you know, uh, you know, engage in that and say, yes, we have a great business, uh, we have money generating from that business, but our value is also to focus, you know, is first of all to focus on the people and first focus, focus or two on in the customer. And another observation that we made is that the same, the same um, you know, percentage of organizations um, have a chief customer officer or chief experience officer at the table of the decision making, <laughs> decision making table of the organization, right? And, and this is something very important. If you want to put customers at the center of your business, you have at least to have someone who is a customer advocate in, every, in the decision making table of the company. And if like just 12 to 15 percent of, you know, top organizations in Africa um, have a chief customer experience officer or chief experience officer, it means that there's a, a massive gap that we, we have to, you know, to, to recover. So we need to encourage other organizations to, you know, uh, take, take responsibility, you know, of being, of, uh, being customer centric and, you know, appoint someone in charge in the entire organizations. And maybe the last observation that we made is that we have a, a, a a great amount, you know, an important number of customer service or customer experience professionals in the region who have hungry, you know, hungry of more knowledge, of you know, more conversations, who are really looking forward, you know, to, you know, to, to gain more and, you know, um, you know, get more knowledge on how they can perform and, and transform their organizations. So there's a wrong way for that. So these are like the, the general observations that we made and, you know, the challenges is really about how can we support you know leaders in Africa, um, organizations, and also professionals 
you know, to to really embrace, you know, um, that 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 point, that fact, saying that we need to focus on, on the customers in our business. We need to establish it as the baseline of what we do. And how can we, you know, um, support people who are looking for more knowledge, you know, to, to be to be customer experience professionals, for example. Yeah, and, and just sticking with the customer experience on the continent, earlier you mentioned uh, the company you work for, which happens to be in the public sector. This is a challenge that many Africans face uh, in as far as uh, customer service delivery is concerned from the public sector. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, your organization has actually won some awards for customer experience. So how yeah. did you manage to do that? And what are some of the things that other organizations in the public sector can can learn from you yeah well very interesting um you know as as i sometimes do and you know i always want to you know to, to get wrong when i'm when i say it when i say it um public companies are not very famous for being customer centric <laughs> and every time i say that I always want you know to to say anything else and this is what i'm working i'm working now much more so um there's a great challenge in public organizations on how you know to transform the culture and uh be be more be more customer centric or or you know citizen centric uh, for example i think uh, the first point is you know to start with um, a vision you know vision and values around that the leadership of the company public or non-public company needs really to embrace uh, putting customer first and putting employees first, you know, as the baseline of the entire business. That's the first point. And also always in public, also in public company as well. Now, the second point is that, yes, having a vision is great, but you need to, to make that vision effective. So you need to build a strategy around it and a strategy that can work <laughs> because there's some that, that don't uh, always work. And you need to be the one that is successful and, you know, find out how, you know, you can, you can overcome the hurdles and, and so on and so forth. So you, not, you need to be a clear strategy around it. Um, you need to be, um, you know, you need to persevere, to be focused. And um, maybe the third point is, you know, you need to show results, you need to prove results um, in what you say. When, when you build a strategy, you know, on how to transform the culture or be, um, you know, be more customer centric. We need to prove results. And for example, in our company, we're a public company and telecommunication company as well. So, on the first point, our new CEO said, um, as part of the vision and mission and values of the company, she said, let's now focus on customer centricity and change management. So, since 2019, uh, these two keywords became, you know, at the center of everything that we do customer centricity and change management. Now, the second point is, um, what is the best strategy that we can put in place? And, you know, um, in public organizations, there are so much challenges, um, you know, for example, public organizations, you know, sometimes leaders are appointed, you know, by the government. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, um, so th there's a huge part of the government involved in the governance of the company. And so there are some challenges like that. And how, what is the best strategy that you can put in place, you know, to have the vision and mission of values. And what we did in our company, uh, in my last position, head of customer relations, is to build um, a CX transformation program, which is particular going from the operational view of the business. So in a business unit that is more operational business unit, and, you know, showing and proving results and then gradually transforming the entire, you know, uh, the entire leadership of the company and showing that we can be customer centric. So just to set an example, um, in that business unit where I, in my last position, you know, we have 30% of the entire revenue of the company and we have 25% of the entire workforce of the company. So we build a sales transformation program like locally uh, we proved results, you know, we defined a sales strategy, um, we implemented a voice of customer program, voice of employer programs, you know, processes, you know, to, you know, to transform the entire experience and the culture of that, of, you know, that 25% of the staff. So we did it and 
we prove results, you know, by improving uh, the revenue, improving the CSKPIs, and so on and so forth. And this is the strategy that we used. And that one works because a uh, few months after, the entire company as well noticed that something, you know, has changed. And they started, you know, to, to take those best practices in that business unit and put it in the entire company as well, the other business units. And this is gradually, this is some, this is something that you can do also, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to, to make it effective in public organizations where the context is very difficult. The challenges are, are very tough, especially in cultural challenges or how to change the mindset. So uh, start with the vision, um, be concrete, you know, find the best strategy and you know, show, show the results and return on investment. Yeah, 100%, I agree. Um, but I do have a follow-up question to that, which is uh, in scenarios whereby the, the public uh, serving company is a monopoly, how would you change the culture in such an instance? Because where there are alternatives, there is a, an incentive to offer, you know, good customer experience. But where you're the monopoly, at times I've noticed that it becomes hard for, to get buy-in uh, from, uh -huh. from some of the higher-ups. So I was just curious if you had any um, ideas on how to, to, to turn around such a, a culture for a monopoly in, in particular. I think... I think um... The, the point is, I, I come back again with the leadership, you know, and uh, what I've experienced is that if the leader says we are going to do this and that the leader focuses on that, that thing will be done in the company, in the entire company as well. So I, I understand the fact that, you know, we, in, in every, many of our African countries we have public organizations who have the monopoly. Um, first of all, the leadership, you know, uh, should be, you know, above the fact, you know, of saying, okay, we are the only company providing, you know, water, electricity, or telecommunication, but we have to be more, you know, take people at the center of what we do. That's the first point. Another point, I think, is also that um, we need to involve, governments need to be involved in the fact of you know, making sure that public organizations treat customers well and treat citizens well. <laughs> they need to have a look on that. And they need to have to build structures, uh, you know, organizations that says, okay, the mission of the government, you know, is to support the people and to make sure that all the population um, have the services. And a public organization doing it, there is someone who has to respond from the, to that, to that question in the government, for example. So I think these are two keys, uh, you know, a government involvement also, you know, to follow up and make sure that public organizations, you know, fulfill their missions and, you know, the leadership uh, as well of these public organizations. I, could, I couldn't have said it better myself. And um, from your interactions with other professionals uh, across the world, particularly in the realm of customer experience, um, what are some of the developments? So, ideas or whatever it is you've seen that has grabbed your attention that maybe you'd like to share with us, um, particularly those on the African continent? Yeah, um, particularly on the African continent, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a community that is really gradually evolving. You see more and more people passionate, um, particularly about customer experience. And um, I think, um, that passion comes from the, the hunger that there is a need for change. And that need for change, uh, you can even see it, you know, in uh, political institutions. When, when, you, when you listen to, uh, you know, all new, newly appointed presidents uh, in Africa, you see that there's a hunger for change, <laughs> you know, in their speech, in what they say. So I think there's a generation uh, in various, you know, aspects of, you know, uh, the living in Africa, who wants to have that change, wants to see that change effective. And so um, for those people, for those in the customer experience discipline, there's that hungry for change too, um, to, you know, to transform organizations and, you know, to, to, to serve and be more customer focused. And also what I see too is the fact that, um, you know, there are other aspects that are, you know, 
coming uh, into also into the customer experience industry, connecting somehow. Today we talk about AI much more. We talk about you know some some more technology, you know the impact of technology in customer experience. And um, I think in Africa maybe the conversation is not very very important on that because um, we still we are still much more you know very uh, people in interactive. Um, you know, we're in a context where we are very actually much more um, interacting with people. So, um, yes, technology, the impact of technology is, is really effective. Um, I think in Africa, much more um, people still are still looking for more interacting, you know, people and interactions. So, this is some of, um, some of, of my also about um, sharing the environment. Yeah, there's, there's something you've mentioned there that has uh, caught my attention that I, I hadn't thought about, but it, it actually makes sense. And that was from the political perspective. If you get all the the fundamentals of customer experience in terms of the voice of the customer and trying to develop programs to meet the needs of the customer, if you look at that from a political lens, that's a very good way to you know serve a country and make sure that you know they're on site and uh, keep your programs or whatever you're doing, you know, relevant and going because some of these things actually do apply um, in that realm per se. And I think it's going forward. It's something that uh, can be done in terms of pol politicians or those in public uh, offices learning from, from customer experience, you know, listening to the customers and that's the people and, you know, putting uh -huh. them at the center of their campaigns. Basically, it's what we as uh, entities do. So why not do the same on the political side? Yeah, yeah, simply. Uh, 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 President, I think it's Kennedy who said that, uh, you know, democracy, uh, you know, government is government of the people, by the people and for the people, right? And we used to say, uh, we used to, to say that, you know, when it's about, you know, taking decisions and so on. But this, this uh, you know, this, this phrase, if we just put this phrase, uh, you know, at the center of what we do, and we do everything for the people, you know, by the people, for the people, involve the people, you know, the citizens, the customers, and what you do and the decisions you take. And I think a uh, thing will be much more different, much more different. So, you know, engage that conversation. Uh, I think will be very much interesting. Yeah. And uh, just before we wind up the interview, um, what parting piece of advice, if there's anyone who's listening to this that is uh, in the C-suite or is a manager, owner of a business, um, but they've not yet embraced customer experience, so they don't particularly understand it. Um, what parting words of advice would you have for them as far as the CX is concerned? Yeah. Well, I think that um, if you are a business owner, I think you need to make sure that your vision and your business model is not centered on you, but on the customers you serve with the goal to improve their lives. That's the first point because um, sometimes we have business owners or you know even startup founders, you know, they come up with the best ever idea in the world. <laughs> and um, the point is, it's really important you know as a business owner or, or a founder to to ask yourself, um, is is improving? Am I improving the lives of the people? Am I improving you know people's lives or am I just you know bringing out a new product or a new service or a new solutions. So it's about really, it's really about improving people's lives. And if you are a C-suite or, you know, um, someone uh, having an important position in an organization, I think um, you need to take for yourself to take a responsibility of caring for the customers. You know, customer experience is not just about people who are CX professionals. Customer experience is about everyone in the entire organization. That's why um, it's a highly collaborative, you know, discipline. And um, if the chief financial officer, for example, of chief marketing or chief sales or whatever, takes responsibility too about, you know, caring and serving the customers and the people, I think things will be very much more different in our various organizations. And the issue of silos will be, you know, covered or, you know, very much more uh, treated, um, managed. 
I think this is this is very very useful and important. I think these are the two advices that I would give to anyone. Right. And uh, before we let you go, for anyone that has listened and watched this particular interview and they want to get in touch with you, connect with you and learn more about what you do, how can they do that? Okay, I'm I'm available. I'm available on, on LinkedIn. Uh, you can just uh, type George Summer. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll be available for you. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, George, for uh, sharing with us everything that you have. I'm sure the listeners and those watching have uh, learned quite a bit and will definitely be in touch to learn a lot more from you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Daudi. Uh, allow me to, you know, to congratulate you for, you know, for, for what you do in the community and, and you know, giving the voice and giving voices, you know, to, to be heard and giving people the opportunity to share in the, on the continent and the region. So I really support uh, your initiative. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.